satisfy with just a cottage below a little silver and a little gold but in that city where the ransom will shine I want a gold one that silver Let's go to the Lord this morning. God, what a mighty, mighty beginning to worship this morning. God, our God reigns. <laughs> My prayer is he reigns in each of our lives, God, because we've got a mansion just over the ear top, God, if we allow you, God, just to be our Lord and Savior. God, what a day. What a great day, God. 
It was a great day to come together and got just some faces today that have blessed me already in a great, great, great way. And so, Lord, today we worship. We gather for the pur purpose of worship. Folks online, folks in the building, God, for your worship, we are. And so, Lord, I pray that we would humble ourselves right in your midst and just allow you, God, to touch our lives. Allow you, God, to do some great, great work right in the midst of where we are. And uh, God, take this moment, each of us, just to invite you in. And then you come along beside us, God, and then you do your greatest work, God. Lord, uh, thank you for that. Thank you that there are open doors, and it's provided through Jesus Christ and his blood and that open door that we can enter right into the throne room of God. Lord, it's amazing. And God, it's a wonderful journey. God, when we allow you to lead us, when we allow you to take us to the great unknown, God, when we allow just our trust and uh, to believe in you, God, it's great. So, Lord, this morning, have your way in this place, God. God, I pray for Stan that's watching this morning. God, battling the issues with feet and legs. And so, Lord, I lift him to you. I pray for Bud this morning. God, lift him to you as he's got some tests coming up. God, there's some other things on our minds this morning, and we can just bring them before you as petitions. But God, I pray that we let our minds settle and just settle on the presence of God. Settle right in your midst, Lord, on this day, the Lord's day, an opportunity that you've given us, a privilege to worship together. God, everything on our mind, let us just give it to you right now. Let you settle the issues and settle our mind. God, you're great and mighty, and we thank you this morning for the Lord Jesus Christ, your son. He came, he gave, so that we might have life and salvation, and we find that strength in him this morning, in whose name we pray, the blessed and holy name of Jesus. Amen and amen. You may be seated. So good to see you this morning. Excited about being together this morning. Just Got here early, and God just uh, moving in me early this morning. So it's good to see you. If you don't have a worship guide, if you don't mind, just slip your hand up, and uh, you can go right back down with it. Our guys will get you a worship guide and won't uh, draw any attention to you or anything like that. So we want you to have it. And uh, thank you again for being here. Thank you for being online this morning and worshiping with us. Uh, just a couple of things I want to remind you of as you get your worship guide. There's a connect card in there. If you need to update information or if you got some questions or prayer requests or if you're a first-time guest, we'd love to have your information. So please put that on there and you can drop it in the offering boxes as you leave the building this morning. They're on each side of the door, the little clear boxes there. They're right there and so you can do that. Let me remind you of a couple of things. Today from 4 to 6, the trunk or treat out in the north parking lot. Uh, if you're using your vehicle uh, for the trunk, um, come on in it and park there. But if you have an extra vehicle, if you'd park it on the side or in the back, that'll give folks uh, opportunity coming in. We want you to invite folks, so when you leave here today, put it on Facebook, share with uh, the community about the uh, trunk or treat from 4 to 6. I know there's a lot going on in different times, and our time seems to be pretty well. And folks can come here and go other places, so it'll be a fun time. And uh, we want you to come and participate. If you'd like to have a trunk, we've invited other folks. You come and set it up. You need to be here about 3.15. Be ready to go by 3.30. And then it begins at 4. So I know we'll have some early comers. And uh, Heather will be kind of organizing for you and um, helping you get where you need to be. Um, there's no CR today. Um, and so um, just know that. And then next Sunday, uh, Revival Sunday. Looking forward to that. I hope you're praying in regards to Brian Fawcett coming in, uh, it's going to be a good time, Thir uh, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And uh, so it'll be Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night. And at 5 o'clock on Sunday, we're going to do a community meal. And uh, I want you just, this will be the first time to be in fellowship since COVID. And so uh, we're going to ask you to bring extra food, be, bring plenty of food, if you will. Just uh, put on extra and uh, invite folks to come and be a part, uh, bring people with you. And uh, let's just have a good time. I've asked you to be in prayer about supporting the revival in attendance, uh, financially, all of that. So be prepared, be praying in regards to that, and uh, be a part of it. And so I think it's going to be a fun time. 
Uh, I know you're going to enjoy Brian Fawcett. Brian was here probably 10 years ago, maybe not eight or nine, but somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 years. It's going to be a great time, I promise you, okay? Um, Wednesday night with the full activity uh, for youth and children. Uh, youth can begin at 3.30, children begin at 5, all age groups involved there. So, um, and then uh, let me just remind you about the roof there. You see what it is in the worship guide. We're about $41,000. Uh, the goal is uh, fifty. And so uh, if you haven't given or would like to give and you're listening online or you know somebody, uh, I always say that you may know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody uh, who wants to give and to bless the kingdom. And so uh, you have an opportunity to do that. And then I want to say something to you. Um, we have an opportunity every year to participate with the uh, Very Merry Christmas Tour. Um, and uh, it, we have an opportunity again this year. And this year it's going to be New Song and Big Daddy Weave. And uh, we provide the vans for their, pres uh, for their transportation. And Heather and Amber drive those vans for us. But I want to let you know that this is free to us. Okay? So if you want to go, we're going to fix a way that we know you're going. And then we'll give you a little pass that will be free to you and anybody you bring. We want our young people to bring folks. And we want you to invite folks, and it will be free to you. We just need to know who you are, and then we'll be making the pass, so you'll show that at the door, and uh, it won't cost you anything. And uh, I have about 14 or 15 of these on the front pew this morning. If you would be willing to place one of these somewhere, doesn't matter where, anywhere in our area or more, uh, if we run out, we'll get some more. But I told David when he brought them, I said, uh, we'll make sure and get them out, so... If you will, pick them up at the end of the service and then put them out somewhere. Um, we got, I think they brought us 24, and uh, so we want those placed around the community. And so if you'll help us do that, just come down after the service, and if we run out, if you'll call the office, then we'll make sure to get some more, okay? I didn't want to get too many because these cost a lot of money. And um, it's going to be at the Civic Center uh, on December the 17th, which is Friday, so um, December the 17th, and it's going to be a good time. And uh, you get to go free, and you get to bring anybody you want with you free. So that's going to be a good thing, and uh, come and participate and be a part of that, all right? Thank you for being here. Let's worship together. Guys, lead us.
through the way things appear, you're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. King of endless. this morning, the opportunity, it's not an obligation, it's an opportunity that we get to worship, it's not something that's guaranteed, it's a privilege, and it's an honor that we get to participate in you moving in this church, in our family, in our community, we have the privilege and the opportunity to pair with you in some small way and bring about change. Changed hearts, changed lives, changed families, changed people. And we have this option to choose to capitalize on our privilege and our opportunity or not. So God, we come to you with a heart of worship. We humbly bow there's nothing really that we have that you don't that you really need, but you you really want our worship because it puts us in a place of humility and service. And so, God, we want to worship you forever. In Jesus' name, Amen. You may be seated this morning. Great job, worship team, this morning. Thank you so very much. John 7, 8, and 9 this morning. We won't be in 9, but uh, we'll maybe mention a little bit about it. But John chapter 7 and verse 8. Those with kindergartners uh, through our 4th or 5th graders, if you want to come down and go out to kids' worship, head on down and uh, go out. Uh, Mr. Dave, Miss Heather, 
We'll have a good time. To our guests this morning, if you have a little one, you want to go out with them, feel free to do so. And uh, I didn't say one thing a minute ago, and if you'd like to help in the kids' care for uh, nursery, we got four ser- uh, for revival, we got four services. Uh, or if you know someone, uh, if you would help us with that, we would appreciate it. Or if you'd like to serve in one of the services, if you'll let us know. Uh, Sunday morning is pretty well covered, but then Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night. And uh, so um, let us know about that, if you would be feel led to, to just do that and uh, serve in one of those capacities. This morning, in John chapter 7 and verse 8, you know, we've been talking about Jesus, the authority of Jesus, the whole book of John. Uh, if you hadn't been following along with us, been in the book of John for a while, uh, took a break from it, did the Song of Solomon, uh, still getting comments from that, and uh, just thinking about that, and back in John, uh, last week was John chapter 6, the bread of life, and uh, God began to deal with me in regards to today, and, and uh, talking about revival, and thinking about our life. You know, there's a lot of doom and gloom out there, but you and I as Christians, here's the thing that we always need to remember. We know how it ends, right? Uh, we know no matter how bad this gets, <laughs> Look, the best is yet to come for us as a born-again child of God, all right? And so this morning, I just uh, kind of grouped John 7 and 8 together and uh, just entitled it, Revival Can Come. Because uh, I have people say, "You think wh- wh- where do you think it's going? What can happen? Um, you know, the, the struggles in life. Um, here's the thing that you and I need to know and realize and then proclaim to them. God's not dead yet. <laughs> He's alive, right? And I don't believe he's done. I believe God's going to do something big. Um, you know, people ask, and we know that the signs of the end times are, are fulfilling. We know that, all right? But also the Word of God tells us that, look, every tribe, every nation uh, will be represented. And uh, so that's, the, that's the, the, the key right there to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, know that you and I can be a part of that. And I believe with all my heart, revival can come. I believe it will come from that standpoint. That opportunity still presents itself. Uh, it will just seize that. And so I want to walk you through some things this morning. Uh, the, uh, there's opportunity for great awakening. I, I'm telling you, I, you know, we see it. Our guys that are in men's Bible study. Uh, and if you're not in there, go look up Wild at Heart. You can go to YouTube. And there's six videos. Sit down with your wife if you want to, your girlfriend if you want to. Sit down by yourself. Look at those things. You can order the book. Uh, I'm telling you, this morning had all of us uh, heart throbs, all right? Just like somebody said, we got a kick in the gut this morning. Uh, it was that good. Not in a bad way, just an eye-opening kind of way. And, and so um, I'm telling you, there's, there's hope. There's hope for you. There's hope for me. There's hope for the community for the state, for the nation, and for the world. And the Word of God preaches that and teaches that to us this morning. Maybe you know somebody who's down and out. I'm telling you, they're in an addiction. They, they, they're, they're, their life they're, they're, is in a mess. Uh, you know, finances, uh, whatever the case may be. I'm telling you, there's hope. And it's in Jesus Christ. And you and I need to grab hold of that and take hold to the truth that we find. And so, uh, you know, when, when you read God's Word, it's amazing to me how it just comes alive. And the issues of Jesus' day, we still have today. Uh, they may be in different ways, different proportions, um, maybe on steroids even, uh, with the things that we deal with today. But the fact is, they are there. And so I want to just give you one verse that we jump in with this morning. Uh, I'm going to ask you that you can follow along on the screen or keep your copy of God's Word open because the Holy Spirit may lead you to make a note uh, there. And you go back and study or you might have a question because I'm going to use several different things this morning as I walk you through, which is kind of different, but I do want you to see that and uh, just kind of see what God wants to do. So look at verse 12, chapter 8 as we dive in this morning. Jesus is speaking, all right, and he's talking to the disciples, he's talking to those around, and many more in the context of where we are. And he says this, I am the light of the world, he who follows me shall not walk in the darkness, but shall have the light of life. See, I think you and I as Christians need to to dwell on that right there, Um, to know that you know that you know that you're a child of God. 
said it from time to time. You go back, and if you're questioning your faith in Christ, then you go back to 1 John. Go back and take a look at that and read through 1 John. But when you get in the Word of God and you really look at that and you begin to see what God wants to do in your life, Jesus says to them and to us that, look, if, if you're walking with me, then the fact is I am the light of the world, and he who follows me shall not walk in darkness. Why? Because they have the light of life. So there's hope for us, all right? So join with me right now. Father, we pray, God, your will be done. I pray, God, that we would grasp the truth of the Word of God, and then we would live like we believe it. God, in our most difficult days, that, God, we would find a way to be on our knees before you and allow you, to, God, to empower us, to take us on the journey, God, and to get all the glory. In Christ's name, amen. The amazing thing when you look at and study the Word of God and you find in John chapter 7 and verse 8, um, Jesus is not bringing any glory to him. He's all, the, he's all the time reflecting it. He wants it to go to the Father. He said, you know, I'm come. I, what I teach is not of me, he says, it's of the one who sent me. I'm here because of the one who sent me. And, and that is so important for us because I want you to know that God is alive. The world needs to know that, that God is alive. You and I are not worshiping a statue. Uh, we're, we're not wor worshiping a false god. We are wor worshiping a God who is alive. And, and the church is alive because God is alive. As born-again believers, we are the church, and the mission of the church is still relevant today. People would say, hey, you don't need the church. You know, more and more people say, well, I don't need to go to church, or I don't have to go to church to be saved, or I don't need the church. Yes, we do need the church. We need the people of God. And whether you're involved or not involved, we still need each other. We, God created us to live in community. And so the mission of the church is still relevant today. And I'm telling you, when you look across, you and I cannot argue with the fact that the time is right for revival. I mean, it's real. And, and, and I mean, it's prime time to see a movement of God. And I'm excited about that. I want to see a, mo a movement of God. And as we dig into the Word, I mean, I think that's why it just kind of burned within me this week, just thinking about revival and thinking about what was going on. And so in John chapter 7, John 8 and John 9, it, it takes place in the midst of the Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of Booths, the celebration that goes on with that. Um, it, it's in the mid, the, the month of Tishri. Um, and, uh, you know, it was this month, Tishri, was considered the most festive month, uh, the most popular month, if you will, uh, of the festivals. It took place in, in September and October, where we find ourselves in the midst of that right now. And, and so it really began uh, on, on the first or the second um, day of the celebration of the Jewish New Year. And then it was followed uh, on the 10th by what we know as the Day of uh, Atonement, uh, in, in which was uh, Yom Kippur. And uh, the high priest entered into the Holy of Holies on that particular day and sprinkled blood on the mercy seat. And, and the two cherubims, one on each side, was there. Uh, the Ark of the Covenant, you know, of course it had been lost, but the simulation was there, and the fact of the, uh, the mercy seat, and all of that was real. And, and, and it was the Day of Atonement. And then five days after Yom Kippur, the, they, they, the Jews held the celebration. And it was real for that, and it was the feast there that took place. And uh, it just uh, remembering the years of God's divine presence, I think it would do us well to remember what God has done. I asked you last week at the close of the service to go back to your point of salvation and, and just try to relive that moment. Go back to that day. You may not remember the time, you may not remember the hour, but to go back to that day. And you think about what God has done. It was a celebration. And so we find the Jews in the midst of the booth, uh, the festival of booths, the Feast of, Ta uh, Feast of Tabernacles, really celebrating the, the wilderness wondering of what was going on, going back and remembering all of that that took place. And so it had become really a time of exp uh, expectation, if you will, and hope that the Messiah would come. And yet, during the day of Jesus, he was there. And they didn't recognize him. And, and they re rejected him, and they really missed him. And so um, when you think about who he was and what he wanted and, and what Jesus, all he ever wanted to do was touch his people's lives. Same thing the goal is today, to change our life, to change our priorities. Um, you know, and, and the Jews were wanting to kill him. 
That's why he couldn't go. He didn't want to go in the public eye because they were wanting to kill him. And, and he told them over and over again to his disciples. He said, "You know, my time has not yet come." The brothers were trying to push him into the public eye, and he was not ready. It wasn't time. And, and so it is for you and I as we think about what God wants to do in our life that we surrender to Him and we let God be who He really wants to be in our personal lives to just touch us and, and to to just hold us close. To think about just a, a movement of God. Because you see, after the, the celebration of Yom Kippur, uh, they held that celebration uh, that we're reading about today in this feast. And, and we, we, you know, from the standpoint of all that took place, uh, it's real. And, and in the midst of that, the water uh, celebration, if you will, there, the, the feast there that took place in the last few days of the Feast of Tabernacles. And the water celebration there where they would take the water from the pool of Siloam, put it in a pitcher. High priest would lead the priest toward and they would go and pray, uh, pour it around the altar praying for rain. That's why Jesus comes in and talks there in verse 37. If any man is thirsty, let him come to me. They were trying in the midst of all the religiosity of the day. But Jesus wanted them to come to him. And I'm telling you, that's where we need to be when we think about revival today. So let me just kind of walk you through some things this morning, if you don't mind. Um, just a touch of God, thinking that he is the light of the world. And you and I as born-again Christians bring that light into a dark world. It's amazing. When David came into the office and brought the very Merry Christmas tour things this week, just talking about the hand of God and talking about what God's doing in the midst of that and what he's, God has done over the years, I... I got excited about it, and now they're planning an Easter event on the, um, on the beach at Biloxi, open to the public. Um, just opportunities, opportunities that present themselves to uh, touch the world. That's you and I, the church. It's what God's called us to do. The church is alive, and the church is well. So what happens in revival? What, what are some keys? First of all, we just need to get honest. That's all Jesus was wanting with the, the disciples and those that were around him is the fact that, that we just get honest. To understand the teaching, to, to delve into the Word of God. Had somebody in my office this morning just talking about digging in the Word of God and looking forward to a, a, a certain verse every day and how God had used it in our life. You know what the difference is? The difference in our life is that we get honest and we delve into the Word of God and then we begin to digest it. We don't just read it to read it, but we get into it and we begin to understand it. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, He works in our life and it becomes a journey. And by the way, the Jews were on a journey and Jesus was ministering them in the midst of the journey, even though they were trying to kill Him, even though they hated Him, He was still speaking the truth. They didn't like his teaching. That's what we find today. People want to reject. People want to go through the word of God and they say, well, you know, I like this, but I don't like this and I'll obey this, but I don't want to obey that. And it's similar to us just taking the pages and ripping them out of our Bible because we don't want to deal with it. Same thing that was happening that day. And I wonder what happened if we just really, really get honest with God. Really, really just get down and, and surrender unto God. As God's people, just to, to come before him. By the way, so many times we think revival is for the unsaved. And people get saved in revivals. <laughs> they do. But you know, it's really for the church, too. For us to come and be together and, and, and hear the word of God and for God just to move. There's something about what God does. During the pandemic, we've heard over and over. And I mentioned to you in this very pulpit, 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. We've heard people over and over and over say something about 2 Chronicles 14, 7, 14. And you know, here's the deal. We forget so many times that God's talking. You know, Solomon had been chosen. He'd finished the house of the Lord and the dedication and all that kind of stuff. And then he says, in verse 13, he says, if I shut up the heavens so that there's no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among the people, and then God said to him, and my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, and I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive the sin and I'll heal their land. 
Do we really want it? <laughs> Does the world want it? You know, we talk about it, we read it, we put it out there, but, you know, it says there that, hey, we got to get right. The people of God have to get right. If we'll just uh, get right with the Lord and watch what God wants to do, God wants to send revival. Don't you ever think God doesn't want to send a great revival? Man, I pray that it'll begin right here. It's God's way, and we surrender. And, and you know, we decide. We, we make the decision. Life's a decision. Do we want God to be first? Or are we going to push him back down the line somewhere? Is God going to come to the forefront of our life, or are we going to just set him aside till we need him? And then we're going to go, hey, God, God, I need you. It's kind of how we do it, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's where we find ourselves. Let's just be honest. And God just wants us to come to him and, and really, really seek him. I'm in the light of the world. Look at John chapter 8, the first part right there. Uh, and, and, and we know this story very well, and I didn't choose to bring it all the way out this morning. But Jesus was at the Mount of Olives, and he was there. And as it, with, when people began to see his workings and the things that was happening, he was there in the temple area, and they began to come to him, and he began to teach them. And then the religious people, you know the story, if you've read it in the Word of God very much, or you've been in church, you've heard it. They brought the lady who was caught in adultery. And the penalty for adultery was the stoning. And, and they brought her to Jesus. And they said, Teacher, this woman has been caught in adultery in the very act. And now in the law of Moses, it's commanded us to stone her. And they were testing Jesus. And then the word of God says, Jesus stooped down and he began to write in the sand. You ever found yourself wondering what Jesus must have been writing? I mean, you ever thought about what he was, was going on at that moment? You know, if you would just allow me for a moment, maybe he was writing the sins of all those that were around her. <laughs> Their name. So-and-so. Boom. Write another one. Boom. And then Jesus just looks up to him and he says, You know, you who are without sin, throw the first stone. Throw the first stone. And the word of God says he just began to keep writing. And then he looked up, and guess what? Everybody was walking away. And he asked the lady, woman, where are they? Did no one condemn you? And she said, no one, Lord. And then Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go your way. And then here's what he said. From now on sin no more see we, we missed that you see what he did he, he, he said to her you I'm not going to condemn you either but you go and don't you do what you've been doing you know you, you heard that before when the guy when he'd healed the guy and he told him go and sin no more do you think he meant it I mean, that's exactly he, when he told her. Basically what he said, look, I just changed your life, so don't go back and get in the bed with the next guy. That's basically what he said. Live your life right and do what you're supposed to do. So you and I just get honest there and, and, and understand that God, won't, God blesses honesty. I'm telling you, God will bless obedience in our life. He who is without sin, it's easy to find fault. Golly, we don't have to look very far to find the fault, right? But just remember where God brought us from. Aren't you glad if you're born again? Maybe you're not where God, where you need to be. You know, I've often asked you in the last few months, maybe over a year now, are you where God wants you to be right now? In this moment, are you where God wants you to be? And then I said, why not? Because only you know and you and God can fix that. But aren't you glad you're not where you used to be? I've had people say, you know, to me, uh, I may not be where I, God really wants me to be, but I sure am glad I'm not where I used to be. See, God's got us on a journey. And you and I need to get honest. And if revival's going to come, we just need to be honest. Honesty hurts sometimes. 
you know, and celebrate recovery and the different things that we do, and even just in counseling, there comes a time when you have to do an inventory. In counseling or in, in recovery, there's a time where you do a moral inventory. Could I just be honest with you? No one, not one, too many of us like to do those inventories, and that's where people drop out. Even in our own lives, you may not even be in recovery, but if you'll do the inventory, sometimes we don't want to do that. We've been talking about wounds in our men's Bible study. And I want to tell you that every man and every woman and every boy and every girl of any age in here has already been wounded. You got wounds. Question is, will you admit it? Have you dealt with it? You know, it might have come from a softball coach. It might have come from a parent. It might have come from a granddad. It may have come from a co-worker. It may have come from the lady at Walmart. It may have come from a pastor. It may have come from a youth minister. Worship leader. It might have just come from a friend. But we have wounds. And so many times we let those wounds lay there and they'll rise up and they, they fester up. And when we do those inventories, we have to figure out what the wounds are. And then we seek the healing. Because we're going to get wounded. We're in a battle. Life's a battle. And the only way the battle's going to stop is when you and I cross over. If you're born again, you're going to heaven. If you're not born again, you're going to be eternal hell. And it's going to be a battle. Remember, as a born-again Christian, the only hell you're going to get is what you're getting right now. But if you're not born again, the only heaven you're going to get is right now. So we need to be honest. Revival can happen. Deal with the hurts. Get past the hurts. Work through the hurts. Do the inventory. I heard something that just kind of caught my eye the other day. Uh, it was on the radio, I, I don't know if it was Caleb or what I was listening to, but they were talking about forgiveness and trust. And they were in a deep discussion, and it came out and they said, here's the deal, forgiveness happens, but trust takes time. I want you to think about that. When, you know, when we talk about forgiveness, forgiveness, I mean, we can forgive right then, but then to learn to trust somebody or somebody has to earn that trust over again takes a long time. <laughs> so you think about getting honest. Praying for revival. Maybe it needs to start where you are and just say, God, I, I need you to work in my life. God, I need you to open some things up in my life. God, show me what needs to happen. The second thing is, ties into that, building block if you will realize we need it i've often heard people say uh well they need that or and i hadn't heard this in a long time but i've heard it as a pastor preacher you got them today you preach to them today no maybe it's for all of us could i tell you before i ever pre preach a message to you god's already dealt with my heart and if we're not careful, we'll miss it. We'll point the finger at somebody else, just like the religious people did on the adulterous woman. Jesus, she's in adultery. The law says we need to stone her. But what's he writing in the sand? Revival's not for somebody else. It's for you and me. It is. And we need it. And, 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 and the whole time when you look at chapter 7 and chapter 8, even in chapter 9, Jesus is trying to get the Jews and the people to understand who he is, to believe that they need salvation, to believe that they need to turn their lives around, that he is the Messiah, that he is the light of the world. In him there is no darkness. He came to answer their needs, the same message that he gives us today, that he came not to condemn the world, but through the world, uh, through him the world might be saved, John 3, 17. Isn't that neat for you and I? Listen, um, you know, you can have freedom this morning. Maybe you walked in with bondage. We talked about that even this morning. Sin produces bondage. I'll, I'll get a little bit ahead of myself. But dealing with that, sin produces bondage. Jesus gives freedom. 
What are you struggling with? Will you let God have it? Realize that we need it, that God needs to touch our life, that he wants to touch our life. We need a fresh touch of God. I'm telling you, we went through some of the most difficult times in our life. As a pastor, as a lay person, some of the most difficult times in our life. Talking to business owners, and they're, and they're, you know, I was somewhere this week in, a, in one of the places, and they were saying, we, just, we can't even stay open our regular hours because I can't get anybody that'll work. Did we ever think we would get to the place in America where we can't find people to work? And we need it even in our daycare. And Amanda will tell you, she's here this morning, that, that we can't find people to work. I was in Burger King this week, and I had James David with me, and, and, and he was just putting on a show, and the lady just started talking and conversing back and forth. And I, and I asked her, I said, How, how's the workforce? And she said, can't get anybody to work. And here's what she said, the ones I do have don't want to work. I'm telling you, we need revival. We need a work, we need a movement of God like we in our generation has never seen. We need that. The pandemic caught us. Financial distress, gas has doubled. We saw $4 a gallon diesel this past week in, in Tennessee. And people are stressing. And I'm telling you, we need God like we've never needed him before in our lifetime. It's real. We need a fresh touch of God. If you hadn't heard the song, and I probably should have had us play it this morning, Song by Cain, and the title of it is Yes, He Did. Google it this afternoon. And the question really says, can he move the mountains? Can he do whatever? And it says, yes, he did. So, yes, he can. I'm telling you, he can. He will and he can. And, and, and he's wanting to move. And I pray, I ask you, when we leave out of here today, maybe you've already been praying, but you begin to pray for these four services. And other people may be doing revivals. Pray for them. Pray for a movement of God. Find out who you can bring. Find out, listen, we're going to be online. They can listen online. Just watch and expect what God's going to do. So we get honest, and we realize that we need it. And then the third thing is be willing to come. Be willing to come. Do whatever you got to do to make it happen. Change some work schedules. Change some different things that if possible. And if not, then you'll be able to get online. And here's the thing. I mentioned to you a moment ago about the most memorable time of the Feast of the Tabernacles. And it had to do in the seven days of that water ceremony. It had to do in the midst of that. And, and what would happen, they were literally praying for rain. They were praying for a movement of God. And I told you, they would go, the priest would go to the pool of Siloam, and they would dip up water, and, and then they would take a picture of it, and the high priest would go before them, and they would pour it on the altar, and they would literally, the shofar would blow, people would be singing their psalms and thanksgiving and praise. The harvest was coming, uh, had come in, and they were just praising the Lord. And they were praying for a movement of God. Out of that comes that verse when Jesus says, If any man is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being shall flow streams of living water. I want to ask you this morning, how thirsty are you? How hungry are you? See, I relate to that. And those of you that went to Africa... You saw what it was like with the kids and the little bellies and all of that kind of stuff. And today I'm following through with uh, Reaching Africa Unreached because they're in the midst of doing the same thing we were doing. Pastor Tobias is there. Jacob and Carol are on stateside. But you know, when we did that well, 
well after well after well, and the fresh water would come. Their bellies would go down. The worms would go away. And they had fresh water. You see the wells that the, the, sometimes we did the holes and we put the pipe into the spring and it would just be pouring fresh water. And, and I actually drank from that well, several of them. And I think about the fact of what Jesus is referring to, and here's where we are today, just as they were that day. So many people are going to the physical wells of life, and they'll never find what they need until they go to Jesus. For he will satisfy their thirst. He will satisfy their hunger. And he bids us, church, all who are thirsty, come. All who are hungry, come. And watch what God will do. The forgiveness. The honesty. The, remo- the, the freedom that comes from that. But God's just waiting. <laughs> He's waiting on us to turn to him. And when we do that, look what happens in verse 38. From their innermost being. That's from the inside, the, 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 the guttural flow will flow rivers of living water. Wow. The world needs its believers just to be fountains of life. Fountains of life because of what God has done in your life. Rivers of living water. The refreshing of others. We used to sing that song, If You Spring Up Old Well... (laughs) Within my soul. And we do the thing. Shh, shh, shh. I'm telling you, we need God. Our nation, the world needs God. And we need, as the body of Christ, revival. Get honest. Realize we need it. Be willing to come. Make it a point. Nothing in the way. Make it a point. And then the last thing is where the people struggle. Is accept the message of truth. See, we don't want to hear the truth sometimes. (laughs) There's a lot of times, really. We we don't want to bear the truth in the midst of where we are. And and and, And the Jews who, sometimes we forget that they literally hated the Lord Jesus Christ. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the religious uppity ups, they rejected the truth. Go back and look at Nicodemus. Thank God Nicodemus, he was kind of the undercover Christian. But he came out in the end. But he was in the midst of that. And the truth hurts. Now go with me. I I don't think I'm going to take the time to take you all the way through, but look at verse 31, chapter 8. Jesus was speaking to the Jews, and it's the ones who had believed in him it's the ones who had stepped out and he says if you abide in my word then you are truly disciples of mine and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free and i'm telling you people are looking for freedom but so many are looking in the wrong places and i just want to tell you that we have the answer And I want to challenge you, church, those that are listening online, quit making excuses. Just speak the truth. Just just tell the truth. Don't make excuses for others. Somebody was honest with me down here, said, look, I'm being honest this morning. I'm not going to lie. That's good. It's okay. The world needs to see the truth. So many times we pull back. And we kind of sugarcoat it. So it doesn't sound quite as bad, we think. So that's another thing in Africa. When, when they ask you something we learned a long time ago, just say no. Because if you say, well, I'll check on it. Or let me, let me see, or, or maybe, you know, that's our words up here. Or we'll try to reroute it somehow. No, in Africa you say no because if you say anything else, guess what? They expect you to do it. In our culture, it's a little different. We don't like to just say, no. It's okay. It's okay. 
And, and we think about the battles. I love what we're dealing with in the midst of these wounds and the battle in the men's group because there's three really uh, enemies that you and I face. And it doesn't matter if you're male or female, okay? Number one's the devil. Number two is the flesh. And number three is the world. Those are our three enemies. And you and I need to identify that. And, 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 and we address another issue, the poser, the one who's really just walking in a facade. Uh, if you want to put it in Adam and Eve terms, you got fig leaves on. And we walk into buildings like this on a Sunday, Sunday basis or on a, another day and we put the fig leaves on and we kind of cover up, uh, you know, the things in life and we try to look good, but on the inside it's being ripped apart. So we're posing. And you and I this morning when we talk about revival, let's get down to brass tacks. And just enjoy the truth because the truth will set you free. And there's freedom in that. And, and Jesus says, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is true. And he goes and he says, truly, truly, I, verse 34, he says, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is in the slave of sin, and the slave does not remain in the house forever. The son does not remain forever. If therefore the son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Sin is always going to produce bondage. Always. It's going to produce guilt. It's going to uh, produce question. When we lie, when we don't tell the truth, when whatever the case may be, sin will always put you in bondage. But Jesus Christ will set you free. That's why he says that he removes the sin as far as the east is from the west that's why he says i didn't come to condemn you but i came to set you free i'm telling you there's some people that walked in this morning that's listening online and other services and in here that are in bondage or we're holding other people in bondage and the deal is we need to let them go and we need to get right and we need to get free in christ that's why we need revival that's why we need to just get honest Last week, in this building, somebody who's normally just an encourager, I went up to him and I said, man, how's your day? He said, can I just be honest? I said, be honest. But I'm ticked at God. I'm royally ticked at God. And they went on to tell me why. I said, it's okay. It's okay. Get honest. Be angry and don't sin. Be angry and don't sin. Just be honest. If you're ticked with God, tell him. Let him deal with it. He'll do a whole lot better job than you will or I will. That's why we need revival. And accept the message of truth. I would much rather somebody be honest and say, man, I am struggling today. Then we come in and say, man, I'm fine. And you just had a knockdown and drag out with the person you rode to church with. And you got out and you buttoned it up and everything was cool. Not really. Because see, folks, listen, when you get honest, God works. That's where he does his greatest work. That's why he says the truth will set you free. Don't live in bondage. Don't leave this building. Don't cut it off online and leave in bondage this morning. Get right with the Lord. Seek revival. Surrender to it. And then really just trust the Lord. God, I need it. God, I'm going to put myself there, God. I want to hear from you, God. I, I, I pray for Brian Fawcett, God. I pray that you would move in his life, that he'll speak to me. See, revival is not something that ought to just be scheduled one time a year. Revival is something that ought to happen on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. Because we need it. It needs to be continued. So don't get caught so much up. God's going to use it. I promise you. If we'll get right, God's going to use it. <laughs> but it's left up to us. Whether we're going to support it. Whether we're going to be a part of it. Whether we're going to come in fellowship. I'm telling you, listen to me. We need the fellowship. 
We ain't had a good Baptist meal in a long time. Right? Come on, guys. It's all right. So I'm telling you, we need it. And we just need to be together in the midst of the hardest time we've ever had in our life. We need it. So I'm asking you to really think about your part. Wherever you are, online, in the building, wherever, it doesn't matter to me. To just be a part and accept the message. <laughs> believe the truth. And believe God wants his best for you. Don't settle for anything less than God's best. Say, Pastor, you just don't understand. Here's the deal. I may not. But I'm telling you, God does. God does. There's a lot of hurts in this building this morning. A lot of wounds. We've all been through something that rips apart we've all been there but I'm telling you God will heal the hurt and God will do some of the greatest work you've ever seen and I've ever seen in my life in your life if we'll just let God turn him loose <laughs> turn him loose don't hold back turn him loose and know that the best the best is yet to come I believe that I'm going to ask you to bow your head this morning. I'm going to ask the praise team, wherever they're seated, to move out real quietly and easily and come to the platform. And they may want to quit playing and go down on the altar because I'm just going to ask you this morning. Here's the invitation. I'm going to be down front, but I just want you to pray for revival. If you'll come to the altar and pray, I'd sure like for you to. Uh, I'll be here. And if somebody wants to quit on the platform praying, uh, playing and come and pray, that's fine with me. Those at home, I'm going to ask you, you know, we leave it on on purpose, and I ask you to bow where you are. I want you to believe this morning in the work of God. you got a mansion just over the hilltop. <laughs> and so, church, I'm asking you to join with me today and just pray for a movement of God. Praying for the man God's going to bring in, Brian Fawcett, but just praying for you that you'll be a part, that you'll be honest, that you'll participate, and that you'll accept the truth. Young people, adults alike, that will just be obedient. Here's what I want to do. I want to leave some word of prayer. I'm praise team, if you'll go ahead. These altars are going to be open. They're open now. If you want to move during the prayer, come on. You can stand with me. I want you to come and I want you to pray. Maybe husbands, wives, single persons, youth. I, I just want you to come and pray and just say, Lord, I want to be a part. And God, I want to see revival. That's all I ask you to say. You can come, kneel, do that. Go right back to your seat. Kneel where you are. Sit down where you are. Grab hold of the person next to you and say, Lord, I want to see revival. And I'll do my part. I'll do my part. Make it visible to the Lord this morning. Make it visible to the Lord. Stand with me, let me pray. Father, this morning, make it visible. That's what I pray, that we'll make it visible. Revival, reality. God, that we'll get honest and we'll be a part. God, you help us right now. Help us, Lord, to draw close in Christ's name. You come right now. Take God. this offering that I bring. Will you come? Humbly I fall on my knees to proclaim your everything. My life's nothing without you. Take my hand and lead me through. You are my sustaining love. Live to
Just to bring something that's a word that will bless your heart. Let's do that again. Let's do that verse again. Oh. 
morning let me just say thank you for uh, being here this morning and uh, I pray as you leave the place today that you really think about what God wants to do in your life uh, just uh, let God just intervene wherever you are wherever you find yourself let God just intervene I want you to be praying for Johnny uh, I didn't realize that November the 8th is the date right I, maybe you told me but brother Walter came and just uh, I want you to be praying for Johnny Johnson uh, as he's looking for that implant that's going to be taking place there. And so uh, be praying and lifting him up. Bud, I mentioned Bud a little bit ago. Bud ran. He's got some tests tomorrow, some, some things that are going on with him. So just uh, yeah, be praying for him, all right? I know there's a lot happening. And uh, just again, remember our Wednesday night stuff. This afternoon, come and participate. Bring some folks. Put it on your Facebook when you leave or social media, whatever, uh, to get the word out for this afternoon, okay? Any other words from anybody? John? 32nd. Check this out. Look at there. Annette didn't faint. Celebrate. Give her a big smackaroo. I know that's why he did that. All right. The 65 and a half or so Mustang will be waiting for you when you get home. <laughs> 66. Okay. Come here, buddy. And, uh, okay. Amen. Nine, yep, 945 in here. Jim does one upstairs and then all our kids' ages. So, yep, love for you to be a part. Anybody else? Rick. goes against our Christian belief to get that shot, and it's a dilemma. I got the shot, I'm good with it, my wife is just feeling better after almost four and a half, no, three weeks of dealing with this. She's not here, so she's at work, and when she's not at work, she's still with me, she's a good person. I'm not the good one, but she was paying for my sins, and I was truly, truly at my wit's end, and when I get sick, I do not go for my shot. <laughs> so for anyone that does not believe the Lord can take it on the chin and listen to you. I promise you, you'll see her today.
more crops to be out there and see the world of difference from our help. But Jesus and I have what I call a come to Jesus conversation. He and I in the back of my yard, I did all the talking, he did listening, and we boom bang. But for that one person that doesn't believe David or doesn't know, I'm here to testify, it's work. You talk to my whoever you want to talk to, whether it's urban, ghetto, Latin, whatever, you talk to me in your language, don't worry about being correct. Right. Don't worry about obstruction. Just have the conversation. Amen. That's, that's all I'm going to say about that. Amen, Rick. Thank you for that. That's the guy I was talking about that told me he was ticked last week. And I love his honesty, you know, and I appreciate him so very much. Any other words? Anybody else? Bring the camera. I'm setting up a trailer to take pictures. Yep, he's doing that. That's right. I forgot about that. She told me this morning. So, yep, it's going to be good. And come participate this afternoon. It'll be fun. Yes, he is. Hey, let's pray. It's been great to be here, all right? God, we bless you and love you and thank you, God, for just being able to be honest. God, you're our dad, <laughs> and God, you care about us. And so, Lord, I pray that we would learn to be more honest. And God, just share and get freedom from that, God. <laughs> so, Lord, bless our folks as we leave this place, as we leave the broadcast. God, it's about you, and God, I'm blessed. I told my wife, and I told God a while ago, I'm blessed by faces I see today that I hadn't seen in a long time. And I'm always blessed by those who encourage us and strengthen us and, Lord, just pour into our life. God, I don't deserve any of this. And Pastor Appreciation Month, God, I thank you for a people who love us and who care for us and, God, who walk beside us, men and women who love Jesus. So, Lord, I pray as we walk out of this place this morning, we walk out in victory with heads high because we love you.